question of why people die. The ultimate statistic is 10 out of 10 people will die. Every single person someday will die. And I'm going to read to you from God's Word, Genesis chapter 3. This is a pivotal chapter in the whole Bible. If you take this chapter out, the rest of Scripture makes no sense. It says in Genesis chapter 3, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the, any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together, and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard that sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. And with pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from where, where was them? the where tree was of them? life and eat and live where was forever. Them? Yeah, no, he said there was a permit for the So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to look to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way of the Tree of Life. This is the reading of God's Word in Genesis chapter 3. As I said when I started, it answers the question of why people die. Men will die because they have violated God's law. In the beginning, there was only one law, do not eat of this particular tree. But Adam and Eve violated that law, and in so doing, sin has entered the world. All men are born in sin as enemies of God. 
says in the Bible that it is appointed once for man to die and then face judgment. And this judgment will be based on the Ten Commandments. You can do a quick test to see if you violated the Ten Commandments. The Ninth Commandment says you shall not lie. It says in the book of Revelations that all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. The Eighth Commandment says you shall not steal. If you've ever taken something that didn't belong to you, no matter the size or the value, that you've broken God's law. The third commandment says to not use God's name in vain as a curse word or irrever irreverently. If you've done that, you've broken God's law. The seventh commandment says you shall not commit adultery. But Jesus says it was said of days of old that if you even look at another person and lust after them, you've already committed adultery in your heart. If God were to judge you today, how would he see you? Would he see you as a liar and a thief and an adulterer at heart? Have you blasphemed the name of God? If so, when you die, you'll be guilty. It says in John 3.36 that if you die without Jesus Christ, you will face his wrath for all eternity. Ladies and gentlemen of Dallas, God has appointed a day when you will be judged. And he has appointed one Savior to save you from your sin. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus being fully man and fully God, he came down from heaven. He lived a perfect life. And he fulfilled God's law. It says in the Bible that because he was persecuted, he was crucified on a cross, nailed to a tree, and God poured out his wrath. And God's justice was poured out on Jesus Christ. But Jesus, after he died, he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. He was observed by over 500 people. And then he ascended into heaven. The Bible says that if you will repent of your sin, turn away from it, agree that it is wrong, and put your trust in Jesus Christ alone, then God can save you. The gospel is the power of salvation. Your religion can't save you. Pope can't save you, Muhammad can't save you, only the gospel of Jesus Christ can save you. I ask you to consider what we said. Thank you.